imagine you get offered a choice. You take a red pill or a blue pill. You're adventurous, you want to find out what's going on, so you take the red pill and find out that you're living in a simulation. You do the usual, save the world, the real world, and the simulation you were living in. And now, someone else approaches you and offers you the same choice. You take red again and save the real world and the simulation of the simulation. And this keeps happening over and over and over. It turns out that the act of finding that you're living in a simulation means that you're likely living in many simulations, a chain of simulations, not just one. So it seems very unlikely to me um, if it happens that it only happens once. So I would assume if it happens, then it will happen all the time. And then also it will happen in our universe that at some point we create a simulation just to find out if we are part of a simulation, we would probably not be the first ones doing it because everyone else outside the external programmer and maybe many levels above would also have been curious. So I had a chat with Professor Florian Neukart. He's an AI and quantum computing specialist from the University of Leiden. He, with his co-authors, recently wrote a paper on the subject of the simulation hypothesis and how we could test if we are living in a simulation. Here is the thing. The rabbit hole isn't endless. There's a bottom. You are always bound by the computational resources of the top level simulation. So when it started, let's say there is um, one civilization of external programmers that starts this whole thing, the simulation. Um, and then what happens is that they have a simulated universe that's smaller than their universe, because now we know we cannot simulate no matter the physical laws, if it's the same like ours or different ones, we cannot simulate a universe at full scale with the resources in the universe. So then the next universe would be smaller. And again, if there is a civilization that emerges and builds a computer to simulate the universe, then it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And at some point, if you think about that further, at some point it will come to a halt. So you will exhaust the computational resources and that propagates upwards until the top level which can be seen as the end of all universes. So I used to play this game called Factorio. And in Factorio, you could build your dream factory, in theory. If you are very good at the game and you make a very large factory, eventually there will be so many entities in the game interacting with each other that your game is going to start to slow down. You can buy some time, upgrade your processor, but then you're going to make a larger factory and you're going to have the same problem. So what can you do? Reduce complexity. One example is that in the late game in Factorio, players switch from nuclear power plants to solar panels because the game sees solar panels as one entity. So even if you have a million of them, the game only sees one solar panel. And in the same way, if we are living in a simulated universe, we can try and see if the uh, external player or programmer has done something to reduce complexity so that our universe doesn't cause their computer to. It turns out if we are living in a simulated universe, there is something that's going to cause our universe to become more and more complex needs more and more computational resources. And that is the second law of thermodynamics. So we know that entropy, so based on thermodynamics, increases over time. But when you think about uh, simulating a universe, so even in the future, when you think about how we currently understand our universe, so that everything drifts uh, further apart. So, and then at some point, we won't have planets anymore. They will uh, fall apart and dissolve into molecules, into atoms again. And then we'll have all the stars vanishing, the galaxies drifting apart. So the assumption would be actually the universe becomes more simple, easier to simulate over time as we see entropy increase. But that is not true because we have interactions between all the particles. Um, and then there is this quantum effect called entanglement. So the more interactions I have, the more entangled particles I have, the more complex 
simulation actually becomes. So even if there are less objects in the universe, as we so less less large objects in the universe, um, it becomes harder to simulate over time. So I must do something um, as the external programmer. I must somehow reduce the entropy. If I'm an external programmer, I can totally do that because I'm in control of the simulation. But we don't need to necessarily wait until the heat death of the universe to see if an external programmer does anything. Just like how entropy, complexity increases in the future, in the past, there was less of that, especially at the very beginning when the universe was at its simplest. And that is the Big Bang. So if we're living in a simulation, maybe an external programmer has done something since then to rein in entropy, reduce complexity and computational resources needed. When you, when you look at uh, the most promising candidate for uh, unified theory, then it's string theory. So in string theory and its um, most um, advanced form comes still with 11 dimensions, with 10 space dimensions, one time dimension. But that's not what we observe in our universe. So string theory explains this by uh, postulating that um, the missing spatial dimensions, the missing seven spatial dimensions are rolled up at the Planck scale. So very small, finite dimensions. And that could be a way for an external programmer to reduce complexity. So based on my understanding, like if we, if we find a lot of evidence that there's too many ways to reduce complexity, basically for the computer not to blow up, mm -hmm. that's that's evidence that we live in a simulation. So the more and more of that we find out, the more likely we live in a simulation. I would agree to that, yes. So the ideal situation is that you do find evidence like that, and now you combine it with a massive experiment. You simulate a simulation yourself. Reminder, if you are going to be making a simulation, that simulation has to be smaller than the part of the universe that you're in control of. So... If you're in control of just a galaxy, you can't make a simulation larger than a galaxy. Let's say you're a type 5 civilization at this point. You're in control of a huge portion of the universe, and you make a simulation of, say, a cluster of galaxies. And that is from the very beginning of time until the end. You set off a Big Bang, and now what you do is you observe. See if life appears in your simulation and then see if that life evolves into intelligent life and if that intelligent life tries to do the same thing you did find out if they are in a simulation and that is by simulating a simulation in that case you can conclude that not only are you living in a simulation but a chain of simulations and the more simulations you find down the line where intelligent life tries to simulate a simulation to find out if they're in a simulation the stronger your conclusion but let's say life never appears in your simulation it doesn't matter how many times you try and do that it just doesn't seem to be happening what can you do easy you put life there yourself you're the programmer you can do that and if this life becomes intelligent life, and then they try and find out if they are in a simulation by simulating a simulation, same conclusion. We are living in a chain of simulations. Thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to find out more about this topic, you can check out the full interview with Professor Florian in the description. I just uh, want to do one last thing. Um, now, you're one of the foremost experts on the simulation hypothesis um, and trying to find out ways to whether we live in a simulation or not. I just want to reveal that this was all a test. Okay. And I have with me right here one red and one blue M&M. Which one would you choose? <laughs> what, what are the options? Uh, uh, red. Oh, this red or blue? Oh, that's not the blue M&M. &M. This is the blue M&M, &M, sorry. <laughs> uh, the red, red uh, is, you see how, the, how deep the rabbit hole goes. Blue, you get to go home and try to find out if we live in a simulation. And uh, it's going to be a very hard job. Yeah, I'll take the blue one then. <laughs>